Good morning and welcome to Christchurch Cathedral, Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, where this service of morning prayer for Saturday the 8th of January is being recorded. My name is Catherine Bowyer. I'm the Dean of Newcastle and I acknowledge that this cathedral was built on a Wabikul land. It always will be a Wabikul land. It always was a Wabikul land. I pay my respects to elders past and present and pray that I, with the cathedral community, may join with them in a spirit of reconciliation in caring for all that God has entrusted to us in the good gifts of creation. The service for Saturday morning prayer can be found in pay, on page 419 of the prayer book. Our psalms this morning are Psalm 20 and portion of Psalm 21 and our reading from the letter to the Ephesians. In the name of God, creator, redeemer and sanctifier, amen. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, A Song of Creation. Bless the Lord, all created things, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Bless the Lord, all people of the earth, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 20 on page 240 of the prayer book. Psalm 20. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The God of Jacob lift you up to safety. May he send you his help from the sanctuary and be your strong support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept with favor your burnt sacrifices grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your purposes. May we also rejoice in your victory and triumph in the name of our God. The Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed, that he will answer him from his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are made strong and stand upright. O Lord, save the King and hear us when we call upon you. Psalm 21, verses 1 to 7. The King shall rejoice in your strength, O Lord, he shall exult in your salvation. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not denied him the request of his lips. For you came to meet him with the blessings of success and placed a crown of gold upon his head. He asked you for life and you gave it him, length of days forever and ever. Great is his glory because of your salvation you have clothed him with honour and majesty. You have given him everlasting felicity and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord and through the tender mercy of the Most High he shall never be moved. 
Creator God, whose praise and power are proclaimed by the whole creation, receive our morning prayers, we pray, and renew us in your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 29. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind, or greed, must not be mentioned among you, as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person, or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. For it pleased God that in him all fullness should dwell, and through him all things be reconciled to himself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may after this life be led to the vision of your glorious Godhead, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we pray today, we continue to pray amidst the uncertainty that is this pandemic season. We pray for those who are charged with understanding and bringing safe ways of gathering and joining together for the communities. We pray especially this morning for all faith communities as they prepare to gather tomorrow in this state of New South Wales, interpreting guidelines and decisions and above all, seeking the welfare of their community of faith. We pray for the most vulnerable, 
for those with mental illness, for those who have nowhere safe to call home, for those who are trapped in dangerous situations because there is nowhere safe, We pray for our health care workers, aged care workers, frontline workers, retail workers. We pray especially for those whose responsibility it is to administer boosters. We pray for staff fielding questions about the accessibility of rapid antigen tests and answering questions around empty shelves. We pray that they may be met with grace, that they may be protected and kept safe. We give thanks for their willingness to serve our communities and pray that they may be treated with respect and dignity. We pray for the First Nations people of this land. In this diocese, the Awabakal, the Biripai, the Darkinyung, the Garigal, the Gaywegal, the Kamilaroi, the Wanarua and Waramai peoples. We give thanks for their wisdom, for their ongoing stewardship. We pray that we may always be mindful of those who have walked this land before us and with us. We pray for welfare agencies recommencing in many places following a period of rest. We pray for them as they emerge into this season of pandemic, as they meet people with needs exacerbated by being furloughed, by wondering about future security. In this diocese, we pray for the work of the Samaritans and for the work of our Anglican care agencies. And we pray for teachers beginning to plan for a new year, continuing their planning, wondering what this new year will look like. We pray for all who are called to lead, that they may lead. That they may seek to not distract, but comfort, that they may seek to be bold and courageous, in caring for the least, we pray that their concerns may be for the welfare of the people in their electorates and not about winning votes. We pray for our bishops, for Bishop Peter, for Assistant Bishops Sonia and Charlie, for our Archdeacons Arthur and Rod. We pray for our church musicians at this time. We pray for all who feel alienated from the church or who feel distanced that they may know that no one is beyond the reach of your love.
on page 186 at section 2. We pray for the peace of the world, the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the welfare of your Holy Church, for our Bishop Peter, and for all the clergy and people. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray that we may share with justice the resources of the earth and live in trust and goodwill with one another. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the aged and the infirm, for the bereaved and the lonely, and for the sick and suffering. And we pray especially this day for those with COVID-19, for those who are caring for them, for those whose mental health has been impacted at this time by uncertainty and anxiety. We pray for those who are distressed and anxious because their surgery has been postponed. We pray for those who are living with pain and suffering as a result of that. We pray your comfort and peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor and the oppressed, for prisoners and captives and all who care for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for each other. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, for the communion of saints and for the glorious hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.